Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Miller. Before I dive into this crazy story, please like and subscribe if you want to hear more about how I survived one of the worst betrayals imaginable. So here goes. I always thought my life was pretty normal, you know? Just your average 19-year-old girl with dreams of becoming an artist. But let me tell you, things can change real quick. It all started when I kept feeling super tired all the time. At first, I thought it was just stress from applying to art schools and dealing with my mom, Linda, and stepdad, Robert. They weren't exactly supportive of my dreams. Sarah, honey, why don't you consider something more practical, mom would say, while Robert just grunted from behind his newspaper. I'd roll my eyes and head to my room to work on my portfolio. At least I had my best friend, Emma, and my boyfriend, Jake, in my corner. Don't let them get you down, Sarah. Emma would tell me over coffee. You're crazy talented. They'll see it someday. You've got this, babe. Your art is going to blow everyone away. But then the fatigue got worse. I started getting these weird pains, too. One day at the mall with Emma, everything went sideways. Em, I don't feel so good, I mumbled, the world spinning around me. Next thing I knew, I was waking up in the food court with a bunch of strangers hovering over me. Talk about embarrassing. That's when I knew I had to see a doctor. Dr. Thompson ran a bunch of tests, and when the results came back, his face got all serious. Sarah, I don't quite know how to tell you this, he said, looking at his clipboard. But according to these scans, you're missing a kidney. I laughed, thinking it was a joke. But Dr. Thompson wasn't laughing. That's impossible, I said. I think I'd remember having surgery. But as I sat there, my mind started racing. All those times I'd felt drowsy or out of it. Had I been drugged? I stormed home, my head pounding with questions. I found Mom in the kitchen, chopping vegetables like nothing was wrong in the world. Mom, I said, my voice shaking. I need to ask you something, and I need you to be honest with me. She turned, knife still in hand. What is it, sweetie? Why am I missing a kidney? The knife clattered to the floor. Mom's face went white as a sheet. Oh, God, she whispered. You weren't supposed to find out like this. Find out what? I demanded, my voice rising. What did you do? That's when she spilled it all. How Robert had connections to some shady medical tourism company. How they were in debt. How this was all to secure my future. It was for your college fund she said, reaching for me. We did it for you. I backed away, feeling sick. You sold my kidney? Without my knowledge or consent? Mom started crying, begging me to understand. But all I could hear was the blood rushing in my ears. My own mother, my own family, had betrayed me in the worst way possible. I now know everything the scar on my back was caused by. Constant fatigue. I ran out of the house, ignoring her calls. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew one thing for sure. Nothing would ever be the same again. I couldn't believe what was happening. My whole world had turned upside down. I needed to talk to someone. Anyone who wasn't part of this nightmare. So I called Emma and Jake, asking them to meet me at our favorite diner. Holy crap, Sarah, are you serious? Emma's eyes were wide as saucers. I wish I was making this up, I said, stirring my untouched coffee. But it's all true. They sold my freaking kidney. Jake slammed his fist on the table, making our plates rattle. We gotta do something about this. It's not right. But what? I asked. It's my word against theirs, and they're my parents. Well, mom and stepdad. Emma leaned in, her voice low. My cousin Michael just joined the police force. Maybe he can help us dig up some dirt on your stepdad? Emma's cousin came through with some info that made my blood run cold. Looks like your stepdad's got connections to a sketchy medical tourism company, Michael told us. They've been under investigation for a while, but nothing's stuck yet. But that wasn't all. As we dug deeper, we uncovered something even more shocking. My mom, Linda, had been embezzling money from her workplace. Why would she do that? I wondered out loud. Jake's face darkened. To fund Robert's gambling habit, I bet. Remember how he always talked about his investments? 
it all started to make sense. The late-night arguments I'd overheard, the mysterious phone calls, the sudden influx of cash followed by periods of tight budgeting, I knew I needed proof. So I did something I never thought I'd do. I bought a small recording device and planted it in the living room. For days, I listened to their conversations, feeling sick to my stomach. They talked about me like I was a cash cow, discussing how much they could get for my other kidney. We could set her up for life with this, Robert's voice crackled through the device. I don't know. My mom sounded hesitant. What if she finds out? She won't. And even if she does, we'll just tell her it's for her own good. College ain't cheap, you know. I wanted to scream, to confront them right then and there. But I knew I needed more. So I kept digging, and what I found chilled me to the bone. There were other kids in the area, all with similar stories. Unexplained surgeries, missing organs, parents suddenly flush with cash. It wasn't just about me anymore. This was bigger than I could have imagined. We're dealing with a full-blown organ trafficking ring, I told Emma and Jake, my voice shaking. Emma squeezed my hand. We'll stop them, Sarah, whatever it takes. I nodded, a plan already forming in my mind. Yeah, we will, and I know just how to do it. With Emma's cousin Michael on board, we hatched a plan to expose Robert and Linda. It wasn't going to be easy, but I was determined to see it through. You sure about this, Sarah? Michael asked, concern etched on his face. It could be dangerous. I nodded, my jaw set. I'm sure. They need to pay for what they've done. The first step was the hardest, pretending to reconcile with my parents. I swallowed my disgust and played the role of the forgiving daughter. I understand why you did it, I lied through my teeth. I know you were just trying to help me. The relief on my mom's face made me want to puke. Robert just grunted, but I could see the tension leave his shoulders. With their guard down, I gained access to Robert's computer. Jake, our resident tech whiz, helped me plant a keylogger to track his activities. Bingo, Jake whispered one night as we huddled over his laptop. Look at these emails. He's setting up another sale. My stomach churned, but I pushed the feeling aside. We were so close. The next part of the plan was trickier. We needed to catch Robert in the act. Michael set up a sting operation, posing as a potential buyer. Remember, Michael coached me. Just get him talking about the sale. We'll handle the rest. I nodded, my heart pounding as I dialed Robert's number. Hey, I've got a friend who's interested in, you know, what you do. Robert's voice was cautious but eager. Oh yeah? Tell me more. The meeting was set for the next day. Meanwhile, I had one more card to play. I anonymously tipped off my mom's workplace about the embezzlement, timing it with their annual audit. The day of the sting arrived. I watched from a distance as Robert met with the buyer, actually an undercover cop. My hands shook as I saw the handcuffs come out. Simultaneously, my phone buzzed with a text from Emma. Your mom just got escorted out of her office by security. It's done. I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. It was over. They were caught. The courtroom was packed, and I could feel everyone's eyes on me as I took the stand. My hands were shaking, but my voice was steady as I told my story. And that's when I discovered my kidney had been stolen, I said, looking straight at Robert and Linda. They couldn't even meet my gaze. The prosecutor stepped forward. Miss Miller, how has this affected your life? I took a deep breath. I'm always tired. I can't do the things I used to love. And the worst part? I can't trust anyone anymore. My own parents did this to me. Linda broke down crying, but I didn't feel a thing. Robert just sat there, stone-faced. The verdict came in faster than anyone expected. Guilty on all counts. As they led Robert and Linda away, Linda turned to me, her face streaked with tears. Sarah, please. I'm so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? I looked her straight in the eye. No, never. That night, Jake, Emma, and I celebrated at our favorite pizza joint. To Sarah, Jake raised his soda, the toughest, bravest girl I know. I blushed. I couldn't have done it without you guys. The next few months were a whirlwind. 
My story hit the news, and suddenly I was being asked to speak at events, share my experience. It was scary, but it felt right. At one of these events, a woman approached me, her eyes red from crying. My daughter. She went through the same thing. We didn't know what to do until we saw your story. Thank you. That's when I knew I was on the right path. With the help of a victim's compensation fund and some scholarships, I enrolled in art school. My first major project? A series on survival and justice. My professor was blown away. Sarah, this is powerful stuff. Have you considered showcasing these? Before I knew it, I was preparing for my first gallery showing. The night of the opening, I was a bundle of nerves. What if no one gets it? Jake put his hands on my shoulders. They will. And even if they don't, you do. That's what matters. As people started filing in, I saw familiar faces. Emma, Jake, even Officer Michael. But there were new faces, too. People who had heard my story and come to show support. A reporter from the local news approached me. Sarah, your work is incredible. Can you tell us what inspired it? I looked around at the paintings. Stark images of hospital beds, shadowy figures, but also bursts of color and hope. Life inspired it, I said. The bad parts, yeah, but also the good. The people who stand by you, who fight for justice. That's what I want people to take away from this. No matter how dark things get, there's always hope. At the end of the night, as we were cleaning up, Emma hugged me tight. You did it, Sarah. You turned something horrible into something beautiful. Yeah, I said, smiling for what felt like the first time in forever. I guess I did. The story has come to an end. Now I've got a question for you. If you were in my shoes, could you ever forgive your parents for betraying you like this? Even if they claimed it was for your own good? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinions matter and I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means the world to me and helps me continue sharing these stories of survival and justice.